And we welcome John this morning. Good morning, John. And I'm going to put you right into it. Um, we are sharing our, our favorite memory of, of Klopp in there or something that stood out to you the most. So I'm going to push this question on over to you since you just popped in. It's a pretty tough question, yeah, for a very early <laughs> in the day. <laughs> um, but it, it's kind of a lot to, to go through. Um, so Serzi mentioned something about a left field choice, but, you know, what kind of stood out to me, I guess, from the get-go was, I don't know if anyone mentioned this because I didn't catch the broadcast before I jumped in, but the 5-4 against Norwich, right? Like, we all we all kind of we all kind of have this image of how a manager should act, right? Obviously, if you're a football fan, you know how he was at Dortmund and everything, how passionate he was about the game and all that. But seeing him celebrate with Lalan and Biteke and Emre Chan and all those guys, you kind of realize, like, hey... And I kind of wrote this about. I kind of wrote this on my piece uh, for the for the website a few a few days back. That he kind of feels like one of the guys, right? He kind of, he doesn't really give that vibe like, oh, he's the boss and he's he makes the tough decisions. He sits down the guys who aren't playing well. You kind of give he kind of gives that vibe that he connects with you that much more than any Liverpool manager of old, at least. From what I've watched, because I've started watching, you know, towards the tail end of, of Rafa of the Rafa era, when you all know, y'all know how Rafa was like he's very analytical, he's very cold towards the players. And before Klopp arrived, I, I honestly thought he was Liverpool's be- he was the best manager I watched uh, for Liverpool. So, yeah, um, it's 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 that Norwich game where I realized, hold on, that this guy, you know, he's got something. He's got that charisma. He's got that that little you know, that little thing that's going to win us over. So we got to back him all the way. So I'd have to say that one kind of got me into like, it kind of got my attention more than more than anything else, I would say. Sadu welcomes us this morning. Good morning. Welcome to the last day of the season. Thank you for dropping in, Sadu. And Brian, let's head on over to you with this question. What is your answer? I've got two, two defining moments to clock for me. What would be the... The stoppage time Origi winner over Everton you know, the, on December 2nd of 2018. Sprint across <laughs> the pitch right there, hugging Allison. I mean, and then having to go and having to do a post match apology to about uh, and uh, of what this conduct. The other one right there would be him walking into boss night right there when, uh, and, and singing LA, LA, LA right there when, when they're having drinks with it with us, you know. I mean, he was one of us, and you know, and uh, he actually I can't say he was. He always will be one of us. He's uh, he's kind of definitely embedded into this club forever. And Gordo, on to you. So it's the same that same season when we ended up losing the final. You know, we had that dramatic semi against Dortmund, and then we had to play Sevilla, and and we ended up losing. And much in the same line of what Serzi said. There's a there was a quote I forget if it was an interview if it was something that that Henderson had wrote and it was just you know everyone was in the hotel they're super down and Klopp like orders around a beer and he's just like come on we celebrate like we got to the final like this is what it's made of like this is just the beginning everybody like the, like there's more to come look what we did in our first season there's more to come of this and and eventually we're gonna get a cup and I think it was that mentality especially because like when he was when he first started i was very much transitioning from like what i thought was an adult and i look back now nine years ago and i'm like god i was i was just a kid nine years ago you know (laughs) you know just graduating college and you know i think i know everything and i was like still playing and i was kind of i don't know he taught me that there was so much more than results right like it was like the small defining moments where it's all about the, the the passes or like the the small good things in games, even when you win or even when you lose, excuse me. And, you know, there's so much more to the game than just getting the wins and getting the trophies. And, um, you know, I've, I've through him, I've enjoyed the game a lot more. I've learned how to enjoy the game in the small moments. So I'll always remember him for that. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to add to that real quick, Matush, before you share your thought, cause I want to piggyback off of it. Um, I also want to piggyback that I'm about to get a brown bottle as well. Um, daytime <laughs> rules on the East Coast or not, everything goes out the bleeping window on a day like this. But, you know, we said before, someone re- referred to this as feeling like the start of a, of a funeral. So I'm Irish-Italian, which means, like, 
we have a lot of fun at funerals. You cry the night before at the wake and you say, and like, but the funeral to an Irish person is literally about the people that are still alive. It's a celebration of life. And that to me, this is about a celebration. And Bickler and I have mentioned this, you know, I'm a little older, so I was far past getting out of college uh, when Klopp got here. Um, but Bickler and I have mentioned this on the Monday Night Podcast. Like, I started following the club in 05, but didn't become a regular every day live and die by this club until around 2010, 2011. So I had three or four lean years, right, of the Rodgers and, and, and you know, post-Kenny era. And then Klopp came. And when I started following this club, it was a godsend to me. Um, I was going through a divorce, and I was in really bad place mentally. Uh, I know Bickler's mentioned this club like being something that helped him get out of bed at a time when he didn't want to get out of bed. Um, so to me, Klopp like not only brought energy back into football, but in some ways it brought energy back into me. And it was right around that time that I actually considered like dating a person that I wouldn't treat like shit long enough for her to stick around. And seven years later, we get married, you know, we literally played, you'll never walk alone at our, wedding and she had never heard of liverpool before we met and now she beats me in fantasy four out of every five seasons um it it didn't save my life it brought purpose and gave me a realization that life was bigger than a bad situation and i honestly believe like trent talks about the man being a mentor and i can talk about the man being a mentor from stupid old western massachusetts and I think that's where he transcends the club, but he also transcends sport. And to me, it's like, I am saying goodbye to what I believe is like a big brother and a friend. Um, so I just wanted to get that out there. Sorry to steal a little extra time, but um, it, it just emotionally, when Gordo mentioned the growing up part, doesn't matter how old you are when you realize you don't know everything and that you can learn more about life. And this guy taught me that, you know, Kelly would probably argue that I still haven't been convinced that Liverpool isn't the most important thing in my life. Um, but I know this, the next two and a half to three hours are going to be a wonderful celebration. I'll probably have some tears, but there'll be more joy at the end of it than there will be sadness. And I thank him for that immensely. Yeah, he's He's got to be one of the only managers that like you enjoyed watching post-match, post -ma post -match, excuse me. Wow. Too many beers. <laughs> post-match, uh, interviews because like after a loss right because other than ten hog because he'll just like say something random um but like you know like, it, there was so much you could learn from life from like how he analyzed a loss and i don't know if you could you could say that about anybody else sparky said he had liverpool litterbirds on his wedding cake and i was going to share a similar thing to to galley i think because you mentioned the moment after winning the Champions League final with, with Hendo ha hugging his dad and then Klopp hugging Hendo. And I think that f for me was the biggest moment. My, I remember 2005 watching with my dad and that was, that was our thing. And then, and then he passed away in 2008 and I felt like everything didn't matter anymore. And it was just, that was, what we had was was gone and I could never really appreciate it the same way again up until, you know, I, so I, I kind of fell out from Liverpool and Galley, like similarly to what you're saying, I kind of fell out with, with who I really was as a person. And I mean, I was, I was, you know, I was 15 when he passed. So it was like in those formative years, if you will. And so having that to go through and then kind of losing the sense of the, the club for me was, was really tough, but then, when Klopp came back, or not came back, when Klopp came in, I can't even, I can't even speak this morning, when Klopp came in, um, it, it, it restored that faith, right? It restored that that sense of of what your purpose is on this world. And it's not, it's not football, it's just being a good person. It's just doing the thing that you want to do for the people that you love to make sure that the next day that you get to appreciate every moment together. And I think that was ultimately what what I will take most from this is that it's just, it's just about doing the right thing and being a good person and 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 just enjoying every moment and that Champions League final seeing seeing Hendo hug his dad and it just that was that was it for me. I think that was the the moment. Um so yeah, I I didn't know how that would come out. It it 
came out a certain way. So we, there, there that is. And Saidu saying, Galley, tears are going to roll from my own eyes listening to your emotional speech on Klopp. And that's that's exactly what it is today. It's all emotion, right? It goes back to to what Klopp said in the very beginning. It's not so important what people think when when you come in. It's more important what people think when you leave. And I